Hello everybody. In this exercise we will demonstrate how to create an animated image zoom effect for little thumbnail images using the CSS transitions. And we'll also talk about triggering the zoom effect using JavaScript event handling to target other events such as click, double click, drag, and many many more events that CSS alone cannot give you access to. So if you want the zoom effect to happen on the click event or the drag event or the double click event you just you can't use CSS alone to achieve that. We'll also set up the animation in several different ways to hopefully preemptively address any questions people may have after viewing the exercise. Before we start playing with the code let's take a look at some live demo examples. Now here I'm using it at the web intersect Q&A section and inside of the threads when any user puts their mouse over an image you can see that image grows and shrinks that way somebody doesn't have to really click to go to somebody's profile if they want to see their image bigger. They can see it right here a little bit bigger. And here is the standalone example that you're going to learn to program today. Okay? It just makes the image pop out bigger right next to the original thumbnail. And the way we're going to be setting it up, it doesn't matter if the images are sitting right next to each other horizontally like this. It'll still grow and shrink like it should. We're going to start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. First thing we'll do is go into the body element and we'll place our little thumbnails. So let's open up an image element, make it source equal to the path of the image that you want. Mine is adamcorey.jpg. And then we'll put the alt attribute. For that we'll just put Adam. Make sure we close that image tag. And then we'll add two more images in the same way. If you see what that renders it's going to show them all full size. So what we want to do is give it some CSS. So first we'll just go into each image and put class equals pick. Or you can name it thumb. Whatever makes sense to you. So we'll take that class and make sure we put it in for each of the images that we want to have the zoom effect for. Now let's go ahead up into the CSS and put a style rule for the class pick. Okay, very simple. We have width and height property set to 50 pixels. So if we look at that now we have little tiny picks. Okay, now you guys are going to laugh at how unbelievably simple this is. What I'm going to do is copy the first one and directly underneath the first one I'm going to place another copy of it but I'm going to name it Pick Big. And I'm going to do the same right now for these other two images. So you can see it's a very simple setup. You have your normal thumbnail image and then right directly next to it or under it you have your bigger version of that picture. So now all we have to do is go up in our CSS now and set up a style rule for the pick big class. And here it is. We want to make sure that each one of these pick big images has a position of absolute. That way it doesn't move all the other elements around on the page when it expands and grows. It can just grow in its own space without making other things move. And we make sure the width is zero pixels. That way it's not even visible. But it's there but it's not even visible because the width is set to zero pixels. Then we apply the transition property and we're just using the WebKit prefix for now to make sure that it works in Chrome and Safari and all the WebKit based browsers. But here's the standard syntax for the transition property. We're going to affect the width property which is right here and over 0.3 seconds in a linear fashion with zero seconds delay the width is going to be transitioned and we have a Z index set to 10 just to make sure that the little zoomed out pictures are displayed above everything else on the page. So if you have things on the page with a higher Z index than 10 just raise this to 100 or something. So the transition property again is targeting the width property of the big pick element. So it starts at 0 pixels by default. Now the last little bit of logic we need is a rule targeting every element on the page with a class of pick we're targeting those and we're applying the hover pseudo selector which is the hover event or the mouse over event and we're using the adjacent sibling selector so this where you see the plus sign in CSS that targets the adjacent sibling so look in our HTML we have these elements right here with a class of pick and then their adjacent sibling the sibling element right next to them is the one we're targeting in this rule to make its width go from 0 pixels to 200 pixels. So basically when the little thumbnail pick is hovered on, the big pick is going to increase in width. 
It's that simple. And it's going to happen with the transition animation because we put this one line in place. So let's take a look at what that renders. That's what we want. Okay, so now that that's working, let's remove this transition property and see what happens. They should just pop out without an animation. And you might want that. You might not like the animation because it might make your page lag or whatever for viewers who have crappy video processors on their computer. So if you don't want the animation, you can just simply remove the transition property that we have in place. Now let's talk about triggering these things in JavaScript because you might not want just the hover event when the user's mouse hovers over the thumbnail. You might want the click event. You might want the double click event or any of the other numerous events that JavaScript gives you access to that CSS does not give you access to. So what you would do in that case is go down into your element or you can add event listeners up in your JavaScript section of your document. But I can go into this element and add the on click event and make that equal to a JavaScript function that I want to fire off. I would name it something like zoom pick open close parentheses and then I would type this in the function that way when the function runs I would have access to this element that's calling the function to run and it can be scooped up as an argument in the function so that gives you access to whichever thumbnail is being clicked by the user in your JavaScript function now JavaScript also allows you to target the next sibling element there's a property I think it's named next element sibling I might be wrong about that, but I think it's named Next Element Sibling. It's a JavaScript property that you can target for elements, and that'll let you dynamically target whichever element is next to the dynamic element getting clicked. So basically, that would give you access to the big pick right next to the thumbnail. And at that point, you can use JavaScript to set this element's width property to whatever you want, and that will cause the animation to occur. Now some of you might be thinking, why doesn't he just make the original thumb grow in size? And you can certainly do that. But to make sure or to ensure that all of the other elements on the page don't get tossed around while the thumbnail is zooming to show you a bigger version of it, you'd have to add a lot of div containers to this application. So basically all of these would have to be in some kind of container to constrain its position. And then you can make the pick inside of that container grow and shrink to whatever you want without moving all the other elements on the page around. So in the beginning of the video, I told you we would discuss different ways to set up this animation. And really, you don't even need the big picks. You can remove those big picks and just have your normal thumbnails. But make sure those thumbnails are placed into div containers that will constrain their movement or their positioning on the page. Remove that and then take the transition control X and put it up here in this rule for the pick and then remove that big pick rule altogether alright let me get back to what we originally had there we go so I think this is a lot neater and cleaner and it doesn't take up really any more processing power because all you're doing is taking the exact same image and putting a version of it right next to it so the page doesn't have to load any extra resources really because the resources are already there and loaded so it's really up to you the way you want to set it up I just wanted to give you different options and discuss different things okay we hope this exercise helps you accomplish some creative things with thumbnails if you enjoyed the video you just watched Click on the subscribe button to tune into Adam's channel. He produces new videos on a regular basis. Below the subscribe button are a few more of his video tutorials that other viewers have found to be helpful or inspiring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.